Good evening, Robert Scribbler. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now, for this segment, I am going to talk about a number of hurricanes that are presently raging in the Central and Western Pacific. But before I do, I'd like to show you this Japanese satellite shot of Hurricane Lane as the sun rose across the Central Pacific this morning. And you can see the central dense overcast of the storm here in the center of this edge-on satellite shot. Now, before I start to talk about the hurricanes, I'd like to talk a bit about the situation in the Pacific Ocean in general. And what we see is that the Pacific Ocean is much warmer than normal overall, with the central equatorial Pacific beginning to heat up considerably in a kind of trend toward what appears to be a predicted mid-ocean El Nino for later this year. We've had a number of warm water Kelvin waves, warm Kelvin waves running in beneath the surface of the equatorial Pacific, which has helped to warm the equatorial Pacific and the atmospheric dynamics have tended to favor El Nino. So it looks like we're trending toward El Nino. Now El Nino in the Pacific tends to enhance the potential for hurricane and tropical cyclone and typhoon development as it tends to warm sea surfaces in the region of the equatorial Pacific where hurricanes tend to form. Now, in addition to that, we have overall global warming, which is, is producing a, a strong signal of sea surface temperature warming in the Pacific. And we have had some recent science indicating that sea ice loss in the Arctic tends to have a telegraphic effect into the Pacific, generating Pacific warming on a relatively short-term basis following periods of sea ice loss or, or following periods in which sea ice has declined. So the warming that we see in the Pacific right now is likely due to both a, a cyclical change in the Pacific toward El Nino, but also due to the longer term, term trend of human forced climate change primarily due to fossil fuel burning. Now, warmer sea surfaces in the Pacific do add fuel for hurricanes and typhoons when they do develop and may not have as much of an effect on the atmospheric dynamics that lend a tendency or, or that favor hurricane and tropical storm and typhoon development. However, what it does do, because it provides fuel, is it increases and helps to increase the peak intensity of storms. And in addition, human-caused climate change adds water vapor to the Earth's atmosphere, which also enhances the peak intensity of storms, including tropical systems. So looking at the present situation at the Joint Typhoon Warning Center, we see three storms in the Pacific. These the two in the Western Pacific, Cimarron and Sulik, are presently encroaching upon Japan. And it looks like Sulik will brush or impact southern Japan over the next couple of days, with Cimarron presently predicted to, to strike somewhere in central J Japan soon after, maybe, maybe later this week. Looking at some of the reports, we see that Simarac is presently a minimal hurricane, while Sulik is presently approaching, sorry, that's still Cimarron, while Sulik is presently approaching category three, it's, it's either very strong category two on the Saffir-Simpson scale or very weak Category 3 on the Saffir Simpson scale, with the Joint Typhoon Warning Center projected path bringing it to the south of the South Island, although some 
models, including the GFS, have it coming very close to the South Island or possibly impacting the South Island. So something to keep track of. It's also worth noting that Lane is presently predicted by the typhoon, Joint Typhoon Warning Center to skirt south of the Hawaiian island chain, but note that the cone of uncertainty does include the Hawaiian islands. Now I'm gonna go ahead and look at some pro projected tracks for these storms. I, I've gone ahead and zoomed out a bit so that we can see both Sulik, Cimarron, and Lane here in the GFS model. Now, this model is a precipitation analysis model, but you can see the swirl and circulation of winds around the storms in this model, as well as the intense bands of precipitation. So I'm gonna go ahead and advance this so you can see the projected path of these storms. And as we can see, first, Sulik is expected to skirt the South Island of Japan in the GFS model even as Lane starts to turn toward the north and toward the Big Island. It's worth noting that Lane's present maximum sustained winds, according to recent observations from uh, Hurricane Hunter aircraft and satellite, is that the, this storm is, is, it has maximum sustained winds of 130 miles an hour. So, so a very dangerous storm presently approaching the Hawaiian island chain. And note that at about the time, I'm going to back this up, at about the time Lane is encroaching on the Hawaiian island chain, we have Simarac projected to impact in the central portion of, of Japan. So, and it's also worth noting that this current GFS model has Lane tracking to the north and running over, I'm gonna zoom in, running, looks like running, yep, running very close to the big island of Hawaii, if not making landfall directly. So three very strong storms in the Pacific, one minimal hurricane, one category three hurricane, and one strong category two or weak category three hurricane, all of which are threatening land and all of which are emerging from warmer than normal waters in the Pacific Ocean. So just a general overview. Thank you for joining me and I'll be chatting with you soon.